All right, folks, welcome to Hunting the Rut Hotline. Steve, it's Thursday night. Uh, what is today? February the... February the 12th. February the 12th. Folks, listen, it's getting close. Season's over everywhere in North America, Steve, except where? Except Florida. Florida, man. We've we, got a few weeks. We closed the door, what was it? Actually, Monday or Tuesday was the last yeah. day in the state of Alabama, so to my knowledge, the only place open is Florida. And uh, yeah. got a couple weeks left in it. So, folks, listen, it's, it's all wound up, winding up, wounding up. That's good grammar. It? <laughs> it's all coming to an end for 2014-15. But, Steve, as you used the analogy a few minutes ago, this thing's fixing to kick off on a whole new semester, and we're going to talk about that tonight. Even though season's ending, folks, we're going to talk about tonight getting ready as what deer are going to be doing for the next 12 months, or actually about seven months, eight months, before you can get back in the woods again and hunt them again. So folks, stay tuned, and when we come back, we're going to jump into this thing. And guys, listen, we want you, if you have a question about hunting the rut, leave us a comment below, as you see, and we'll answer it during the streaming live broadcast each week. So don't forget, you have a question on hunting the rut, leave us a comment each week below. You'll be able to see it, and we'll answer it live, your question live, during each week's streaming broadcast. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. John Bell. Hey, Steve Berklow. And folks, tonight, listen, it is February the 12th, and everybody else is, you're thinking about other stuff, folks, and we're just winding it up down here in yeah. North Florida. Yeah. Two more weeks of it, and uh, this past weekend, Steve, every year, uh, I don't know if folks know, but I, I got some miniature snails. There's one of them's a diabetic, and uh, we, we can five, six does every year. And so we, uh, six does were kind enough this past weekend to be able to participate in my Schnauzer's diet for the next <laughs> next 12 months. So what we want to do, Steve season's out, and uh, we had some guys caught the other day and was talking to us, and one of the things that a lot of hunters are doing in the north right now, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what was it today down here in Florida it was what? Six, uh, about 60 degrees. 60 degrees. Yeah. You know, there's places up north, you know, it's in the teens yet. Mm -hmm. Snow on the ground. And what a big thing for people to do in the north, especially the Midwest, the Northeast, is right now, bucks are shedding horns. They're getting in uh, 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 yards. They kind of yard up together on the south side of those ridges. Mm -hmm. And they get in that snow. And man, you're talking about finding some antler sheds, but that is that is a big thing to do up in the north. Mm -hmm. Not so big down here in the south. No. I mean, think about it. Do you know of anybody that goes and looks for sheds? A bunch. I guess I, so much cover. And You'd be looking woods. forever, wouldn't you? Yeah. I mean, when we trip across the shed down here in the south, yeah. we think we've done something. Yeah. Uh, you, you could walk forever, and besides that, that, that time of year time, they shed here. Yeah. Uh, you, you better have snake boots yeah, on. Yeah, it's burning up. Man, we have a uh, bio shield or something. That's there. You got to take care of that. Hey, but look, folks, listen. Uh, right now in Alabama, believe it or not, in, in North Florida, you could literally, this past Monday when season ended, you could actually shoot a buck and hook that rascal to a four-wheeler and take him out of the woods by the horns or antlers and have no worry, no second thought. Mm -hmm. A month ago in the north, if you killed one, you'd have to be very careful when you grabbed him on the horns because, Steve, he'd break off. Right, right. Because they're getting ready to shed. And so what we're going to talk about as this show's going to start getting back together in bachelor groups, which they're already doing all over the country, and then what we're going to start doing in future shows, Steve, we're going to talk to them in the spring about what deer are doing in February, March, April, May, June. And right now they're getting together. And to use your analogy, they're starting a whole new semester, and it's a good analogy because they've had spring break, mm -hmm. and now it's winding down, and they're fixing to get back together and reestablish another pecking order. Yeah. Uh, they're coming out of the pecking order during the peak of the rut, and now everybody's going to kind of come back down. All these young bucks are going to get together. No antlers, but the big boy is still going to be in charge, and they're going to start learning about life. Mm -hmm. So. What we're going to do is talk about that tonight. And folks, listen, we want you to stay tuned. And I believe in just a few moments. Guys, do we have a, our first caller up? I think yeah, we do. There we go. Uh, we'll take our first caller for tonight. 
Let's see if we got him online. Yeah. We do have him online. Make sure I mash that right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. All right, you got Don Bell and Steve Burklow. Who we got? You know, that's the heart of the black belt, and historically some fine bucks comes out of there. Steve hunts in that part of the world. I hunt in that part of the world. And it's some fine deer. Now, I say that to say, John, when, when are you having your worst time doing that? Uh, are you talking about pre-rut when they're having uh, secondary scrapes and rubs or primary scrapes? When, when are you... Primary. I, I'm having a tough time catching them at the first, maybe about the you know the third week of January. I'm having a rough time catching them then. Well, there's there's a thin line. Uh, you know, just before the peak of the rut, once he starts making that primary scrape at master bedroom that we keep talking about on the show, and he, he marks it by urinating in it, the doe, uh, she'll mark it. You know, a primary scrape's always underneath, Steve, the, mm -hmm. the overhanging yeah. limb. And, but once they start, uh, he's checking that. He's checking. And what you're saying is you can't catch him at the scrape. You're seeing him, you're seeing the results of it, him being there, but you can't catch him there when you're there. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, I'll check the lines. I'll see, you know, catch his trails on each side, and I'll set up in the right wind at different times of the day, and I just haven't, you know, I know he's probably out foxing me. Well, yeah. yeah. Uh, we had a lot of problem this year, too, and our part of the world. It was quite a bit different this it, year. It, it was... Uh, it, it's I, crazy. Tell it's them very, about... It's very slow this year. Probably the worst and guys, as far as seeing deer and seeing rutting activity was very, very minimal this year. What Steve's talking about, and Steve, you tell them, is which is crazy. This piece of property, you guys, have, you've managed it for years. Yeah. And even half of the property, is a difference in just in half of the property. Mm -hmm. And what well, the only thing that separates the creek. Yeah. And yeah. it's his property, John. And but yet, deer seem to be more on one side than the other. Yeah, they seem to be uh, rutting. Peak of the rut seems to be a little better on one side. Than and the other. you know, it could be covered, John. Are you, right. are, are you having, by any chance, are you putting a camera on the, the scrape? Are you seeing the buck? I have seen the buck and I had a camera on it. Um, he wasn't there at any that specific time. Um, you know, early in the morning to middle day to midnight, you know. It, yeah, he's, it, you know, he didn't have an established time. Right, but he's checking it just no certain time, and right. so so uh, the reason I ask those questions is we'll go back to the uh, to he's not so much nocturnal as he is just random when he's checking it. That's what you're saying, right? right? Yeah. All right. Then you need to kind of treat him sort of like if if he was nocturnal, and what I mean by that is uh, you know. First of all, you know, you always want to kill your human odor. And, John, are you familiar with the new stuff we just introduced? Uh, actually, I am. I have a bottle of the soap and the uh, spray, nice. and I <laughs> have been using it. And, you know, to that effect, I've had younger deer and does, I mean, come within 10 yards, have no clue uh, yeah. there. Well, and I sit on the ground 90% of the time because wow. it's Not in, just too right. hard to get up the tree. Are you right. bow hunting or gun? I'm unhunted. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, having said that, you folks, and the reason we say that is saying about the uh, killing that human odor, mm -hmm. and, and the new product that we have called Scent Defense not only kills the human odor, but Steve, what all else does uh, it do? It repels mosquitoes, ticks, all that. All plus, of that. Plus, the deer love the smell. Right. So, it's formulated not only, John, is, and everybody as a uh, odor killer, a better odor killer, because we married copper with silver. silver. And then it also is an all-natural repellent. The industry's never seen this before, folks. And it not only does that, but it repels and kills fleas. Ticks, mosquitoes, black flies, yep. uh, bed and bugs. Any kind of biting insect. <clears throat> plus, it's formulated, John, to where deer come to it. Now, so having said that, I want to get back to y your question. Kill that human odor. You're doing it right, folks. you got to do that. And now you got something that you can be comfortable doing it. Mm -hmm. Not only protect yourself, but be comfortable in doing it without fighting the mosquitoes. But I treat this buck as just like a, uh, old Steve here was a dominant buck, and he was nocturnal. Mm -hmm. I'd kill that human odor, and I'd go in there, uh, you know, two, three. You're, you're close. How far are you from where you're hunting? You're not far from where you're hunting if you're living in Camden. No, maybe 10, 12 minutes. Man, I'd get up and go, you know, if you go hunt Saturday, get up Wednesday, go in, whatever time, it don't matter, lunch, 
before you go to work, uh, kill your human odor, go in and put buck urine in it. Mm -hmm. Leave. Uh -huh. He'll come in, and he'll come in no matter when he comes in, he's going to check it. There's going to be another buck in there, Old Spice. He's going to tear it, scrape up. And if you put a camera on this, you really see it. You'll see him reacting to it, and then him remarking his scrape. So it be at midnight. Well, next right. morning at the same time, very important. If you do it, going to work, do it each morning at the same time. Then the next time you see him, it may be three o'clock in the afternoon. But each time you do that, you do that Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Saturday. You trail your buck urine in, kill your human odor, trail your buck urine in, get up in the tree and grunt. You know, put it in a scrape and grunt. And w what you're doing is you're making him come closer to to catch that other buck in that scrape. Top secret is oxygen free, which makes you right. be able to do that. If you used anybody else's scent, it's already ammonia native, mm -hmm. Steve. I don't know when the deer have been there. Right, it's just, it's, you know, it, you, you think about it, it, even if you go pour it out and sit down, it's ammonia native urine. You know, so it tells an animal how long another animal's been there. With top secret, John, when you pour it out each morning, those three mornings, the closer he comes to it, it tells him he's getting closer. Yeah. So the third day, you go ahead and do it just like you did at the same time, get up and hunt. Yeah. Right. So his nose that's designed to help him will get him killed. Right. Right. <laughs> you know? So, uh, of course, you know, go ahead. One thing about the, the top secret, I did use it. I was in a, uh, I walked into a green field that we had, and I had trailed some of the buck urine. I kind of made a circle around there, and uh, I wound up shooting a cow horn spike, but he came out and he was nose down on it. Yep. He just, he followed basically everywhere that I walked. I mean, he came and gave me a nice broadside shot. Yeah, yeah I mean, nice, you know, nice, but I mean, he was on that stuff. I mean, I mean, he was heavy on it. My brother and I, I don't know if he told you, but Mike and I did that. We, uh, he went out, he grunted while I took my bow, and we foamed it in, come in, middle of the day, middle of the day hunt, and 30, 40 minutes, uh -huh. uh, Mike was videoing, and we had a young four-point or six-point come in 20 yards, just where we laid yep. the trail. If he, uh, if he would have been a good buck, we would have had him right there on video. And you were using the, the foam. The foam. The foam. We, actually, we're using buck and hot mama foam. Combination. Actually. Yeah. What were you using, John? Were you using the foam or the liquid? Uh, I was using a liquid on the drag. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, it has great application. Same stuff, different applications. You know, what mm -hmm. Steve was doing, he was foaming estrus, buck, estrus, buck. So when you grunt, what you're saying is another buck's tending a doe which is whose doe is his doe, so you, that's a buck chasing a doe. So when you do that and everybody and you foam buck urine and then estrus, buck estrus, you got a buck chasing a doe. Mm -hmm. It's just that simple. And it's, it's, it's not overthought, but each time Steve foamed it, it's the first time it hit oxygen. Mm -hmm. Which the key right. to it is, John, and everybody's listening, this makes it, tells the buck or the doe, you're there while you're there. Mm -hmm. Which is the deal. You. You know, a lot of people put it in drippers and put it out way before they get there, mm -hmm. which, you know, makes, doesn't make a whole lot of sense because you're telling them you're not there. Because mm -hmm. even if they come in, you're not there. So, uh, but you, hey, you got, <laughs> you got about, eh, about nine months to think about it. Yeah, we do too. Right, right. Yeah, no, it's time to, um, to get everything fixed up and uh, wait for the next year. The uh, February season was good. Uh, He's not from A lot camp. of deer moving around. Uh, it was, a, it was an exciting extra 10 days. John, where are you from? I am originally from New Orleans. All right. <laughs> that's, that explains it. <laughs> <laughs> I, knew, I knew you didn't have no Wilcox County accent, dog. I can tell you that. <laughs> How long have you been in Wilcox County? Uh, since 2005. Hey, it's a nice place, ain't it? Yeah, that's when we bought our uh, place up there, 2005. Wonderful place. Yeah. All right. Well, we're glad you called in. And uh, listen, tell everybody about the show, because what we're going to do, John, now, season's in, and, you know, two weeks left in, uh, in Florida, and then we're all about what Steve's analogy is, the new semester. Because bucks are already, you know, uh, losing the horns in the north. They're already yard what they call in the north, Midwest and northeast, yarding up. And literally, I mean, you can find sheds just left and right underneath that snow. When the snow melts, they're just laying everywhere. Uh, but so we'll trail that, and we'll start talking about what these deer are doing where you can understand them when season comes in 
uh, back in this September and October this year, you'll be able to better understand what he's been doing all year in Camden, Alabama, or Minnesota, or wherever the, wherever the listeners are from. Yeah. Well, Big J, we appreciate you calling in, man. Call back in, tell people to watch the show. Man, I do appreciate it. I find your show very informative. I'm a big fan, so uh, thanks a lot. We'll look what? forward to uh, the next one. Hey, hey, uh, John, make your way around the bypass there and tell everybody, man, they need to be they need to be stocking them some some uh, top secret bio defense, scent defense, and fog sure. zero. Yeah, you, I'll do it. All right, dog. Appreciate it. Thank you for calling in. Hey, yeah. Thank you, sir. Right, <laughs> All right, folks, we'll be right back. All summer to get everything just right. Don't leave the rest of it to chance. Use the finest deer urine ever collected and the only one in the market that is oxygen free. From collection to bottle, get ready. It's time to hunt. and kill the bugs that bug you most with the all-natural 100% deep-free BioShield. You've waited your whole life for this moment. Don't spoil your opportunity because of poor preparation. Keep your optics clean and fog-free for a clear shot every time. Fog Zero. All right, folks, we're back, and listen, we're going to take us some quick Facebook questions. I want to correct myself, Steve. That's, uh, <laughs> it's not BioDefend, but what? BioShield. BioShield. And so, guys, get you some. Uh, yep. You can go to the websites now. They're all live. You can get everything, and uh, we're going to take us a quick Facebook. Uh, what's the first one? All right, we got Andrew Small from Hicksville, New York. How would you suggest hunting the rut in a brand-new area that you never hunted before? Do you consider scrapes, rubs, etc.? Yes, <laughs> on all the above. Mm -hmm. uh, Andrew's where? He's in uh, New York. New York. Uh, I'm not sure what part of New York Hicksville is, uh, but really, uh, you know, what you want to do, Andrew, really not just in New York, Andrew, but everywhere, mm -hmm. as you start off hunting, though, I'm assuming that you're going to, when he's saying hunting the rut, we're going to assume he's hunting the season, because uh, Andrew, the rut's the entire hunting season in New York. Once they shed velvet to the time they drop their antlers, Mm -hmm. They're in rut. Yeah. So, Andrew, having said that, you do want to hunt the rubs and the scrapes. And start off with, he wants to hunt the secondary scrapes, Steve, and the rub lines. He, he may see the rub lines before he sees the secondary scrapes. You may see them combination. And the best place to look, Andrew, anybody, everybody, is if you had rubs and scrapes there this year, you're going to have rubs and scrapes there next year. Yeah. Even if you shoot old Steve here, and the next most dominant buck's going to come in and take that. You know, location, location, location. Mm -hmm. It's true. Prime real estate. So the first yeah. place to look is where you found them last year, and then that'd be the first place I'd start on your property. Uh, but if you, in his case, this is a new area, mm -hmm. then you need to go looking for that. Transitions, mm -hmm. uh, you know, logging roads, the edge of fields, mm -hmm. clear cuts, transitions, yep. uh, all those kind of places. And, mm -hmm. and guys up there in the north, those cedar breaks up there in New York, uh, where they like to rub those trees and smell them. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they love to hook those aromatic trees with the bark where they can do it and smell it too. Yeah. So uh, try those with you, Andrew, and let us know how that works out for you. Let's see, Steve. Yep. Let's, we, got, right. we got another one here. Uh, Riley Emery from Adena, Ohio. How close can you get to a doe bedding area uh, during the rut that. without disturbing other deer in that area? Uh, well, now that's that's you know that's a that's a that's a deer by deer question there. Yeah. Uh, you, it depends, depends on wind and yeah, it depends on wind, terrain. You know, uh, if it, if it's wet versus it being dry. Man, the other day, the, uh, this weekend, it was dry. You, and I was trying to get through a clear cut, and it did sound like a Mack truck going uh, through there. Just crunch, 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 Probably crunch. depends on what state you're hunting, too. That's right. They're a lot skittish down here. And yeah, you're exactly right. And, and, and that is a key point with that. Guys, and I know it sounds crazy, but you know, all of you that's living in the north, in northeast, uh, midwest, northeast, uh, even, even really, truly out into Texas, but you come to the southeast, mm. Our deer are skittish. It's like coming down here trying to turkey hunt. 
Yeah. You've done something. You killed a turkey in, in mm -hmm. Alabama now. I mean, mm -hmm. they, uh, they, of course, we got a bunch of good old boys down here. they got a reason to be nervous, don't they? <laughs> so, but, uh, Riley, what you want to be able to do is, you know, it really depends. I mean, doggone it, you, you, it's hard to get up close to a deer, period. Um, and, in fact, it's rare to slip up on, a, mm -hmm. on, on any kind of deer. You know? Yeah, I sure hate to. I like to stay out of them bedding areas when I can. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're right. I mean, you know, if if you know if it's a bedding area, I wouldn't get in it. I'd stay out of sanctuary. it. Stay out. Yeah, let that, right. Mm -hmm. Leave it as a sanctuary. Don't touch it. And, and stay on the outskirts of it and get the trails to and from it, especially mm -hmm. early season. They'll be transitioning through there. That's right. The early season, they're going to transition to food back to that bedding area. And then once the, the rut starts going, those bucks are going to start skirting and staying on the outer perimeters mm -hmm. of that, catching them does in and out. That's good places uh, to catch them. You bet. Uh, let's see, guys, we got room for a couple more. All right. All right, we got uh, Brian Johnson from Waco, Texas. Uh, can you describe how low pressure versus high pressure weather conditions affect whitetail movement? I don't know, Steve, that low versus high is one versus another, but the fact that it's changing yes. makes a difference. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was always told growing up, growing up, and you may have been told the same thing, you know, if you go, you see cows laying down, Mm -hmm. Or you know, or cows walking around. It's it's deer get up and move ahead of front. Mm -hmm. Animals uh, move ahead of fronts. They're they're going to get out whether it's a transition change or not. It doesn't matter if it's cold, or low, or high. Yeah. Uh, if there's a transition, they're going to get up and feed ahead of it, and then they're going to feed after. They're going to lock down during it. Mm -hmm. uh, so. It's amazing how much they can move, though. The oh, yeah. weather can change, and boy, it just get, it's just crazy. Well, the, you know, it's, it's sort of, you know, guys, how it is. It, we, we're down here on the Gulf Coast, and if they say there's going to be a hurricane, you can't find food nowhere because every chef in the world got all the vein of sausage off, sucked right. off of it, all the milk, because they're, they're gearing up for it. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, you see that in, in, in any kind of bad. Last week, two weeks ago, the big snow forecast up in New York. Yeah. Everybody went in, sucked everything off, and there was no hardly no snow in New York City. Right. But the same thing applies for deer. They're yeah. going to get up ahead of those fronts. Any kind of front change, uh, feed ahead of it, and feed after it. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, guys. Let's see. Get back here. We got. Can we do one more? Or do, you, do we go in? All right. One more. All right. We got Gabe Hanna from Mount Juliet, Tennessee. Uh, can you freeze the urine after it's been opened and exposed to oxygen? Uh. I would not. You can, but I wouldn't. Uh, and Steve, once you open it and it's exposed to oxygen, all you're going to do is freeze ammoniated urine. Yeah. The key top secret is that every bottle is oxygen free. Now, guys, on that camera, you look at that right there, how yellow it is. Let me show you something we did. You see that bottle, how brown that is? You open that cap and close it, that's what it does. Except most people will do that. It'll be almost a chocolate because the longer it sits there, the darker it's going to get. So what you want to do is hunt with clear urine the first time you use it. You want to be able to, to uh, put it in what, Steve? A scent saver. You want to put it in a scent saver like this. You open the bottle up. Pour it in there. You pour it into your scent saver. You plug it. Okay. And you simply pump it out. And now, in between using it, uh, Gabe, it takes all the oxygen out, mm -hmm. and you're ready to go. Uh, show, Steve, show them that little nipple on the top there, mm -hmm. and where all you got to do on the top of it, uh, all you got to do is push or pull that little nipple that's sticking up <coughs> in the center of it. You can see it right there. You can push or pull it, and it'll break. You hear it go. Ch It'll break the vacuum seal. And That's right. You're ready to go. Ease it right off without scaring everything in the wood. That's right. Because if you don't, you're gonna sound. It's gonna go pop when you pull it off. Mm -hmm. So it's got the little nipple on it that you can push or pull. It breaks the seal. And the key to that, Gabe, is you want to be able to pump yep. it out in between using it. Right. This is called a scent saver system. Yep. Your local sporting goods store can get it. You buy that. That'll last you for years. Right, and that will hold the whole bottle. That's right. Uh, I've had that question a lot. It holds all three yes. ounces. So. That three ounce bottle, everybody else, Steve, retails for twelve ninety five for one ounce. One ounce. We're fourteen ninety five for three ounces, and this entire bottle will fit into this bottle. You get the plug, the bottle, yeah, and plus the pump. the pump, 
and all and you can use this over and over and over in fact what you can do Gabe is you can take this you buy that set and let's say you're gonna put estrus in it mm -hmm. all right you got uh, this one's buck urine all right so you put buck urine in this one well you can buy just the bottle Steve right. and the plug extra to get you one to put estrus in right same pump so you got one for buck one for estrus same pump mm -hmm. last year for years so you can protect what you purchased which is the mm -hmm. finest ear scent the industry has ever seen, oxygen free for complexion of the bottle, and this you maintain and keep it without oxygen right. in between using. It'll Pretty. be good from now just until this season coming up. That's right. Yeah. Keep, you just keep it pumped out. You know, the way to look at it, guys, it's like wine, except mm -hmm. <laughs> don't drink it. <laughs> I believe we got, we got us a caller. Yeah. Big Tom, yeah, I guess we do. All righty. All righty, you got Don Bell and Steve Burklow. Who we got? Hey, this is Joel in Iowa. Mr. Joel in Iowa. What part of Iowa are you in, Joe? Northwest. 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 Man. What town are you in? Molina. Molina. Uh, I was trying to think we're not rifles. Uh, years ago, we, we, we had, with Pratico, we had night rifles, and I cannot think of the name of the town that night rifles was in over there in Iowa. Do you remember? Night rifles, you're saying? Yeah, night rifles, the black powder rifle. I'm thinking that was southeast, though, southeast Iowa. That could be. Yeah. Are you from Iowa? Yes. Man, yeah. Ooh, I am that. Yeah, dog, you got, you got an extra bedroom or two. We'll come hunt with you. <laughs> yeah, hey, dog. Hey, stay. I got you. I got you set up. What, watch this. Hey, Shelby, get, make sure you get his number when we get through. That's right. What'd you say, Joe? I said, that, that sounds like a deal. Well, if y'all come down to Florida, you come up here, we'll switch. All right. There I guarantee you. you. Yeah. And, 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 and we're going to get the better end of that stick. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, what kind of question you got tonight? Oh, I just had a question. I kind of put it on Facebook there, too. But uh, it just seemed like whenever I'm, I'm in a stand, to see my other stands, and they always seem like they're, they're running in them more than they're coming by me. I mean, the other ones. Yeah, it's like you're getting, in the, you're getting in the wrong... Go ahead. I'm sorry. I said the nicer buck usually I can see him coming. I can see him going. I can see the rubs. I try to put myself in that position. I end up seeing little ones. And well, now, you're, guys, everybody listening in, uh, owl is a different animal. Owl is flat. Corn, you cut the corn. Uh, of course, they live in the corn until you cut it. And, uh, you know, you got the drainage ditches and the little wood lots. Uh, so, I mean, but the good Lord, uh, are you, you gun or bow hunting? Both. Mm -hmm. Mainly, after my question is about both. Bow? Uh, are you having the problem, or what you're, the question is, you, you got X number of stands and you always get in the wrong checkout line that had two people in it, next thing you know... <laughs> Yeah, that's what it feels like. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What about your human scent? That's yeah. Are you killing your human scent? I'm doing what I can. I guess. Yeah. I've got uh, I got some spray that I put on and. and uh, well, um, are you familiar? Uh, I don't know if you watched last week's show. The past couple of weeks, we just come back from you know the industry. We just introduced new product for 2015, mm -hmm. and we just introduced a new line and. Uh, it's called Scent Defense, and it's three in one. The industry's never seen it before, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's pretty neat. It not only kills odor by uh, we married copper to silver, which is a better mouse trap in killing the bacteria that causes human odor. And then what did we do, Steve, to it? Well, we uh, we put a repellent in there that repels and kills fleas, ticks, mosquitoes, right, and that's any biting insects. And that's called what? Oh, that'd be good. And listen, Joe, that's that's proprietary to us, and it's called. Uh, you talk, the, the repellent, the repellent oh, part. Yeah, the Neurex. I'm the sorry. Neurex. It's called Neurex, and that's proprietary, proprietary to us. And look, you can uh, you can take a bath in it. You have it in the shampoo and body wash. You have it in the laundry detergent, and then of course you have it in the spray, the field spray. So mm -hmm. for the first time, not only can you kill the human odor, but you can be able to repel fleas, ticks, mosquitoes, uh, bed bugs, any kind of biting insect. Plus 
It is formulated. The best thing about it is. Yeah, <laughs> it's formulated as an attractant. They love the smell of it. It's and absolutely it's, wonderful. It's crazy. Uh, they come, What do they do when they come into well, it? They come licking. Just it's, they stick the tongue out and start st sticking the nose up. They'll stick the tongue out and kind of lick their nose. Yeah. It's like and listen. What's crazy about it is even the fawns do it. Even it don't matter the age, doe, bucks, they all do it. They all come in doing the same thing. So people ask, well, why? Another question. Yeah. If you've got that and they're and they're smelling and they like it and they notice it, if you're up in the stand, does that bring their attention to you to kind of kind of lock you in? You know. No, you you got two different things going on. A urine. Uh, this is more of a uh, curiosity type scent rather than a uh, yeah rather than a urine base infringement or sexual type uh, attraction so it's two different two different things going on uh, but we've been able to marry all three of them together uh, by any chance do you turkey hunt I do all right uh, you we've got another product we just introduced called uh, BioShield, mm -hmm. it is Neurex, uh, and that's the same thing, but for the first time it's all natural. Look, uh, you can spray it on your hands, wipe it on your face, you can put it on your child's face. It's not going to harm them, and it, it repels any kind of biting insect. Mm -hmm. But Ticks also. Big. Yeah, big time tick. Yeah. Now, but the key to it is, is we also have it for the first time while you're turkey hunting, you know to kill your human odor to go hunting. You know to take a bath, you know to wash your clothes and spray it. We now have it in uh, BioShield to where you can spray the repellent, but you also can take a bath and you can also wash your clothes. Mm -hmm. It's neat. and uh, it. That's something I've never done with turkeys, though. I mean, do they have that greatest sense of smell? No, no, no. You're not worrying about the scent. You're worrying about the doggone mosquitoes taking you off or them or ticks, the ticks. Oh, eating I you up. You. Yeah, yeah. So what you're doing is... It doesn't have the human body odor in it. Right. Because it, you're not worried about your humans. It is a very there. pleasant, almost like a... Uh, uh, honeysuckle lemon. Yeah, well. honey, oh yeah, almost like a honeysuckle lemon. Kind, very pleasant. And so what you can do is is you can take a bath. You got three layers of protection. Hey, you gonna take a bath before you go hunting anyway? So you have it. You have it to where you can wash your clothes in it, and then you can spray it on you. Mm -hmm. So you know, and think about it. This is available now. You can go on the website and get it. Uh, it'll start shipping nationwide uh, three one to dealers around the country for turkey season, and so you'll be able to. Uh, you, you literally, you can send your kids off to school. They got to take a bath and they got to wash their clothes. So the, everybody that works in the woods, outdoors. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. This is a cast me out right here. So it's brand new, and uh, it's being advertised everywhere. Uh, yeah. You know, on all three networks: outdoors, sportsman, and pursuit channels. Yeah. Look for BioShield right now. Yep, BioShield yeah. and Fog Zero. Uh, yeah, I, like, I like that. Also, bugs. That'd be a that'd be a hell. Oh, listen, you'll you'll like it and you'll like the smell of it. And it's totally different. You can do the uh, body wash. You can wash your hair. Uh, you can wash your clothes in it. And you can do it every day. Uh, by any chance, what do you do for a living? I'm salesman. Salesman. Well, there you go. Yeah. Uh, listen, this stuff is pleasant. Uh, at trade shows, we have a lot of ladies come by. And we give them some to go wash their hair. They look, they look at us like we're crazy. And they come back and they say how much they like. Steve, what do you use every day? I, I I wash with it every day. <laughs> it's it's nice. It really is. You'll get you'll get hooked on it. Yes. Uh, it it's good stuff. Try it and look. Uh, call back in. Tell your friends about the show, and because we're fixing to make a transition now, and we're going to start talking about seasons. Two weeks left in Florida. We're done for 2014, 15. Now we're going to start talking about what these deer are going to be doing next fall in Iowa as they're already bunching back up together there in Iowa. I mean, uh, have you already been shed hunting? You know, I haven't made it out yet, but it's... It Too cold, out, ain't it? Yeah, I bet. I bet. I've I mean, been ice, ice fishing right now. So. Ain't wow. take, now yeah, listen, son, you, you, can't, you can't tell these two boys to drive out on a lake uh -uh. and to cut a hole in doing it. <laughs> no, sir. Our sales manager, you can't make this up, he told me the other day, last weekend, he took his little boy uh, fishing, yeah. Three and a half foot 
three and a half feet of ice, right? So they just drive out on the lake. That's the first mistake. Oh, yeah. That's a bad decision right there. Cuts a hole, puts a line in it, and they're having a big time. He drops his cell He's talking to somebody, and he drops his cell phone in the hole. Oh, my God. <laughs> I've seen that happen. Uh-uh, man. Oh, we, don't, man. we don't fish in the hole. Come down here in the Gulf, and we'll show you some fishing. Yeah. Oh, I'd like that. I've been there fishing. It's, uh, I love it. I love deep sea fishing. Hey, all right. we, 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 need to, we need to swap stuff. That's hey, listen, we appreciate yeah. you calling in. We're going to take a quick commercial break. Call us back. Tell all your friends about the show, and uh, tell them to call in each week. We'll do. Hey, man, right. thank you for thank calling you so in so much. Thank you, thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> all right, guys, we'll be right back. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll come back, and we'll talk all over again. John Bell, the founder of Code Blue, comes Top Secret Reserve Doe Esters, the finest doe esters ever collected. Top Secret Oxygen-Free Collection Process is a complete generation above Code Blue. Our patent-pending collection process means no ammonia and no ammonia smell. At a limited quantity of 12,000 bottles, only one-tenth of one percent of hunters will be lucky enough to add Top Secret to their arsenal. Visit TopSecretDeerScent.com today and join the one-tenth of one percent club. All right, folks, we're back. They're trying to, we had a different one telling us a countdown, and we didn't know if they had sign language or what they were doing. All right, well, listen, folks, listen, we want to remind you, Steve, we're still in open enrollment, which means the one-tenth of one percent club. Mm -hmm. uh, you can be signing up now for that. you just seen the spot, the commercial spot. All you got to do is you can go down below us, hit that yep. button. It'll take you to the site. You can pre-register. You can uh, pay for it over four payments. Uh, and say, hey, uh, ship us, ship me my bottle, boy, just call now. Yeah. He can say, ship that to me next August November, August, September, November, whatever. September, whenever. So it'll pay for it over four payments. You get to be a one-tenth of one percent club member. You get to participate in all the stuff that you see on the screen. It's a great deal. Folks, go ahead and be signing up now for the club membership. Open enrollment, and that'll go through about the middle of March, mm -hmm. and then we'll, we'll be cranking in a different direction. So stay tuned. Go ahead and join that club. You can see the button there. Hit it. Take you to the site. Pay for it over four payments, or you can you can pay for it one time if you want to. Yeah, you yeah you can pay for it once to say ship it next year because you don't want the you don't want the scent now. No. You want the fresh stuff. So what you want to be able to do is to say I want it. You can buy it, a uh, one time and with a future ship date, whenever mm -hmm. you choose, or you can hit that and pay for it over four payments, mm -hmm. and and say ship it to me this coming fall. That mm -hmm. way you secure your 26 ounces. There's only 12,000 bottles. Thus, the one tenth of one percent club. Now, folks, we got it in estrus, and we got it in buck, and we do not have twelve thousand bottles of buck. Mm -hmm. The buck will be the first to go. Mm -hmm. uh, you got way less buck than you got estrus, because think about it, it don't take that many bucks to service X number of does. Right. So you always have less bucks than does. And uh, believe it or not, it's a little harder to collect the buck here than it is the doe because he's a little more irritated with the process. So, uh, so <laughs> go ahead and get signed up for it, folks. And uh, we're going to do something a little bit different here now. Uh, this past weekend, Steve, yeah. we, uh, I don't know, five, six does. We, we do it every year toward the end of the season. And um, we, Derek, my son, he loves to cook and he loves to fool with game. Big trapper. Mm -hmm. And uh, he sent us a, a meatloaf recipe, and I believe guys are throwing it up on the screen there. This is a, if you like venison and you make hamburger meat out of it, this is posted. It is a great meatloaf. In fact, when we get through with this show tonight, and I drive to the house, I got waiting on me when I get there, a venison hamburger. <laughs> and we just that old boy that old boy hit the ground Saturday and he's ground up and he's waiting on me when I get to the house tonight. Get out and, of here. It was good. <laughs> it is good. And folks, those of you that make hamburgers, uh, you want to run about well, I, what I do, Steve, we put about fifteen percent pork mm -hmm. with the <laughs> with the uh deer. Yeah. That's fine. Oh yeah. Really I mean good. I know I'm telling you that's some good stuff there. You got just enough pork in it that it, it keeps it together mm -hmm. and keeps that, that lean meat moist. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, guys, hey, you can see this, you can come back to the show, you can, uh, can they freeze that on the show? You can come back and get this menu, write it down, try it, you're going to enjoy it, it's some good stuff. And that is actually Derek's wife's April's 
recipe for this oh, stuff. Man. Pretty good stuff. You guys, you try it out. Uh, guys, we'll be back in just a second. Guys, we're going to another quick commercial break. Nope. nope. Okay. Oh, Can yeah. we, we got time for some uh, Facebook? Facebook, right, we good. Facebook. We, guys, we're trying to catch up with Facebook. You guys ask us how you get into mine, and uh, so we're, we're, we're trying to squeeze these old boys in there. Yeah, we'll see what we got. Here. We got Jason Fate from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Is there any chance possible, is there any chance possible that bucks can be patterned during the rut? Uh, the answer to that is yes, because the rut is the entire hunting season, pre-peak mm -hmm. and post, but again, Jason, that's real important to understand that pre-peak and post, the rut's the entire hunting season in Wisconsin. Uh, Milwaukee, you're up above Buffalo County up there. Uh, I'm assuming that you're hunting up in and around Milwaukee. But uh, that, Steve, that what he's asking, is there any chance that bucks can be patterned during the rut? The answer is yes, during pre-rut, way harder during the peak of the rut. Yeah. Because they're running, they're checking, mm -hmm. yeah, that's uh, they're searching. Um, and though they have a home base of that primary scrape, mm -hmm. once it gets to the peak of the rut, they're everywhere. They're distracted. And, they're distracted, yeah. and yeah. I mean, you know, it's just like, uh, Jason, I don't know how old you are, but you remember, now you're old enough to remember a Super Bowl. You know what a Super Bowl is? Mm -mm. You don't remember Super Bowl? No. <laughs> uh, Tom, you remember Super Bowl? Get out of here. You remember, no? A Super Bowl <laughs> is a little black ball, literally, you could drop it and it'd bounce all over this room. Okay, I've seen now, something like that. You just that. drop it and it'd just, it'd go forever. If yeah. you threw it, it'd kill you. Mm -hmm. A buck's like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Jason, pre-rut, you can pattern him on the rub lines and the mm -hmm. secondary scrapes. Peak of the rut, just before the peak, you can get that primary scrape. You can show him working it. You can, you can entice him. You can make a mock scrape. But once that peak gets, when the majority of the does are standing, he's like that Super Bowl. He yeah. ain't waiting. He's checking the bedroom, and he's going to somebody else's bedroom. Yeah, it's tough to pattern them. Yeah, he's yeah. tough. Then you've got a post-rut, Jason, where he slows down again, mm -hmm. less does, and he's a little more predictable yeah. of, uh, and, and not quite as frantic, uh, still harder to pick. The easiest time to uh, pattern him is pre-rut right up to the prior to the peak, hard to do it in the dead peak when buck does are everywhere, mm -hmm. and then it gets a little easier again toward the post rut. Yeah. Uh, and right now, up there, you know, in Wisconsin where Jason is, they, you know, it's yeah. over with and there's snow everywhere, and, and Jason, they're already, and you know this, they're already up there in those yards. Yeah. And uh, that literally just bunch up up there, Steve. It's a dang thing. We, it's so foreign to us down here. Man. If you could go up there and see it, it's crazy. <laughs> I've never seen it. Yeah, in the snow, like right now, you could go up there in the snow, uh, and on the west side of those hills, uh, those uh, what we'd call a branch, man, and you, you, you're just laying there. Wow. And they, what they do, they start getting back to get, well, they get together for warmth. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why shed hunting is so popular up there, because once you find those yards, man, there's antlers way out. You'll find a bunch of them Usually you'll find a bunch of them. Uh, wow. Some, but a bunch of them. Yeah. Uh, you come down here, you start to death. <laughs> yeah. nah, yeah, Checking them gallberry bushes yeah. for them. All right, let's see. Facebook. All right. Taylor Douglas, uh, Winona, Minnesota. Can you explain how the rut lockdown works? Taylor? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you see, Rubs, <laughs> I'd love to tell you I can tell you that. I'd be flat lying to you. Yeah, uh, I, if we could put that in a bottle and sell it, it happens we, in we, Alabama. I yeah, can tell we, you that. it happens everywhere. There's just doggone it, and I can distinctly remember it happening in Alabama. Mm -hmm. uh, in our lockdown period, is December. Mm -hmm. Doggone you! Just tracks everywhere, no deer. Mm -mm. Uh, and you would think on your piece of property that they're locked down on your side. I mean, yeah, I'm telling you. It's crazy. And sometimes you scratch your head, there's no rhyme or reason for it. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Taylor, the short answer to that is I'm not 100% sure. Mm -hmm. Honest, And that's just being honest with you. Uh, they and, do it, for sure. Yeah, they uh, do it. And, it's and a little I, different everywhere. We've got all kind of people telling us different reasons why. And I tell you the truth, uh, that varies. Mm -hmm. from uh, area to area, state to state. A lot of it is, you know, can be weather, it, terrain. There's just a lot of things going on, but I don't know. I mean, I, we, we need to try to, even though we try to find that out, mm -hmm. somebody's asked us that before. 
Uh, I don't have a real good answer for it. And to tell you the truth, I don't know anybody that can pick the phone up and give me just a, everybody kind of staggers around like I'm doing and saying, hey, you know, there's different reasons why they think it is. Mm -hmm. But doggone don't it happen, and it's a bad thing. You reckon, but you reckon he might be talking about when a buck locks down on peak of the road, when he's locking down on the doe? Uh, well, yeah, I don't know. I, I know. A lot of times they'll lock with and stay with the same one. Now, yeah. Now, if he's talking that, mm -hmm. then can you explain how the rut lockdown works? Well, that's not hard. He gets on a hot doe, he'll he'll lock on that doe and stay with that doe, and and you've seen this happen. Yeah. And, and Taylor, you hadn't maybe if or you have uh, other hunters, you definitely have. You'll see them, and I have seen them go into a, a brush pile, a doe. Mm -hmm. run up in the brush pile to get away from him and lay down in there and the buck would be like a, a predator or something stalking around Just, and lay down. Right. Yeah, he's going to be right there. Lay down and she's laying down and he's laying down because he can't get in there to her and finally she wouldn't just ease out. She'd bust out and he'd get up like a dog right behind her. <laughs> so if that's what you're talking about, yes, yeah. he, if, if he knows she's close He's going to stay on her. He's yeah. going to keep other bucks away from her so long as there ain't a batter boy around. Than he is. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, but Taylor, call us back and uh, yeah. call in, Taylor. Differentiate and, that. Yeah, maybe. and tell us which one yeah. you're talking about, and then maybe we can talk with some kind of common sense and answer your question here because yeah. we're not 100% sure which way we're talking about. All right, guys, got. All right, let's go ahead. Facebook. Frank Wright, Quincy, Illinois. That's a good place. How many days in a row will you sit in a spot before moving to a different area to hunt? Oh, that depends on state too. I would think yeah. in hunting pressure and that's right. Um, that's kind of a it's a, it's a good question, but it pressure, uh, weather, wind direction. Uh, yeah, the bucks that you're seeing. Uh, there's just a lot. You know. If you kill a deer there, you know, some people, if you take a deer on a stand, they may want to let it lay mm -hmm. for a few days to get, you know. And and I'm not saying that doesn't help. Certainly it does. Mm -hmm. Depends on what time of year it is. If it's during the peak of the rut, you knock him down and get back up in the tree. That's right. That ain't going to make a bit of difference. Because mm -hmm. uh, when they're out running them, they're running them, or if they're searching, they're, or, you know, whatever, they, if they're doing it, they're on. Right. They ain't paying attention. No, they're not. I mean... You can yeah, shoot him. So, so during the peak of the rut, for sure, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you can hunt it. You can hunt it, stay with it. Uh, but as far as uh, how many times in a row will you sit, I mean. And that kind of depends on if you're bow hunting or gun hunting. I mean, look, so. how many stands you got up right now? You got them named. Uh, probably about 25 lock on. You, yeah, and you got them named, and you know which stand, and which whether it's a morning hunt based off of wind, mm -hmm. Frank. You know, that makes a lot of difference if it's a morning hunt or an afternoon hunt. Yeah. Wind changes, you know, you may say, hey, I'm going to hunt whichever stand we're talking tonight. I'm going to hunt this and hunt this. You get up in the morning, wind's different. You change your mind, you go a different way. Right. So wind has a lot to do with that. Mm -hmm. uh, guys, we got time for a couple more? Right. Sure. We got, okay. We got William Bell. From That's Atlanta. a good last name. That is a good one there. Atlanta, Georgia. Describe your ideal hunting stand for me, please. Uh, describe your ideal rut hunting stand. Oh, rut hunting stand. Rut hunting stand. Well, we keep clarifying this, and so I'm assuming what William is talking about is during the peak of the rut mm -hmm. versus the entire hunting season. Yeah. Now, or if uh, maybe I don't know if he's talking the type stand situation or whether or not he's talking about during a given period. Uh, which one do you think he may be talking about? Think about a stand location. That's kind of what I'm All right, which you thinking. mean, which kind of stand location? Do you like yeah, to hunt optimal, out of? optimal, yeah. What kind of? What's what, your favorite, I, it looks like? Well, I... Now, Steve's strictly bow hunt. Yeah. I, he ain't going to go hunt. bang, bang. He ain't about a bang, bang. He's all about a pull of string. I, I just like being on the edge of uh, real hard cover where they bed and right in that, right on the outskirts of it. And where they're coming to food, the closer I like to be right there. And you, um, your lock-ons, mm -hmm. uh, no climbers. Well, every now and then, mostly lock-ons. Mostly lock-ons, yeah. and I like a lock-on. They're, they're, the guys are a lot safer, and you don't have that that noise. But look, man, there's a lot of people who climb a stand, and you'll have a buck come running right up in there to you on a, on a climber. Because what you're doing is you're going click, 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 going up that stand, going up that tree, mm -hmm. and it sounds like. 
going yeah. up a tree. Yeah. And it's happened to me, filming. You'd be going up a tree, and next thing you know, you got a buck standing there, guns on the ground, a bow's on the ground, there's a deer, and they're filming. I mean, you know, I mean, yeah, but it's happened, to, it's happened to you, me, it happens to people. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know that I have any particular way that, or location. It really depends on where you're hunting. Uh, I like transitions. Mm -hmm. I, I like to see. Yeah. Now, uh, having said that, we've got one place on the property that it is so thick, honest to God, the only time you're going to see him, you're going to have about a 10-yard shot on him. Mm -hmm. That's it. You're going to have about a 10-yard wind on him. Mm -hmm. But you see that one coming through, he's a decent deer. Be ready. And he's tearing the world up in there. <laughs> and uh, But now you just got to let them does come on through. Yeah. You know, you just sit there and go to sleep counting does. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, let's see, guys. All right, well, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We come back. Uh, we're getting close to the end of this show here, but we may can squeeze in a few more things. Guys, we'll be right back. Rise and shine. It's time to hunt. You've waited your whole life for this moment. Don't spoil your opportunity because of poor preparation. Keep your optics clean and fog free for a clear shot every time. Fog Zero. Repel and kill the bugs that bug you most with the all natural 100% deep free BioShield. We got two different people in our countdown there. Yeah. All right, guys, we're glad to have you back. Uh, we're gonna take a couple of quick Facebooks and see if we can squeeze in a couple more uh, before the hour. There, Steve. What right. we got? We got Doug Alberts from. Uh, I'm gonna mess this up. I know it. Decora, Iowa. There baby. you are. Can you describe the Bell, the founder of Japanese uh, urine? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, in that we collect urine. Uh, without oxygen from collection to the bottle mm -hmm. and it is a it, it is literally dug it it has changed the scent industry when I introduced code blue uh, everybody collected urine from a blend of deer mm -hmm. you know 55 gallon drum a whole 55 a whole 7,040 ounces in a bottle 7,040 one ounce bottles of urine I used to bottle tanks and we used to I used to batch 10 drums a day 70,000 bottles a day. All of them smells the same. Code Blue was one deer, one bottle. So what we've done is we went above that mm -hmm. in that ours is no oxygen. Mm -hmm. And it is a game changer. So for the first time, Doug... One deer, one bottle, no oxygen. No oxygen. Yeah. You can take that right there and it can sit there forever and not change. But if you open it and close it, Without pumping it back out, it's going to do that to you. It's going to turn dark. Mm -hmm. So that's the same product. This is both buck urines. Simply open the top and close it, and there's the difference. Mm -hmm. Now, if you open this and put it into the scent saver like Steve showed you earlier in the show and pump that out, it'll, it'll stay, stay like this. Yeah. So then you can use this bottle all the way down. And you pour it all in here and pump it out between using it. You can use this bottle all the way down, all the way down. It'll still be this color, and it will not be this color. This says the deer was there. That's what everybody else has got, mm -hmm. is ammoniated urine, right. Steve. That says the deer was there. This, Doug, says the deer is there, and he's there right now, which is when you're there. Now, and that's uh, when you want him there. Thomas, <laughs> it ain't complicated, yeah. is it? You want the buck to be there, the deer to be there when you're there. Yeah. A predator wants to know when the animal that he's trying to kill is there, not that he was there. Mm -hmm. He don't get down and start crouching up there if the urine's old. Yeah. Because he has nothing to crouch up on. Mm -hmm. Fresh means he's there. Yeah, same with that buck. That's exactly the yeah. same. Yeah. So, uh, Doug, not exactly how we do it. That's what's patent pending on it, and about four different ways. And uh, 
We got a bunch of people would love for us to answer that question. <laughs> but I look safe with that. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not going to do that. Uh, so, but it is oxygen free from collection of the bottle, and you can get you some tonight. You can go to your local retailer anywhere in the country and ask for a top secret deer scent, or you can go to top secret deer scent. And hey, Doug, join the club tonight. Yeah. Get you get your bottle of reserve. Uh, you can do it. Hit the website tonight. Order it one time pay, four time pay, Steve. Mm -hmm. And you, can, Doug, you can tell them that you you can tell us we want to ship next September, October, November. You pick the date. You'd be ahead of the game for the 2015 season. You got, hey, 12,000 balls for 12 million deer hunters. You do the math. That's That's one right. tenth of one percent. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's, one. it's a, yeah. yes. Guys, it's amazing, Steve. It's already, uh, they're, they're in there holding up. The, the big sign that says right. this this yeah. this dog and pony show is over with for this week. <laughs> yeah. But folks, we're going to be back next week. Uh, we got two more weeks of season left, Steve, in yeah. Florida. In Florida, yeah. Uh, then it's then we're done like everybody else. But then we're going to turn all of our attention to what deer our our deer are start getting back together in bachelor groups. They're already doing it in the north, and we're going to tell you what that means mm -hmm. and how to understand what they're doing all deer and. February, March, April, May, June, July, through summer, all the way back up to season again, mm -hmm. and you'll be able to have a better handle on why that deer's there and why he's there then versus why he was there last year. Hey, folks, mm -hmm. we'll see you next week, 7 o'clock Central Standard Time. Get on the phone, tell everybody. We'll see you next week. We will be here next.